cast first cast sweet all right starting her off five to seven 12 inch fish so pretty. Look at those lines. That's awesome. There we go. Hmm. Such a pretty little fish. Good fish. Good fish. Oh yeah, good stuff. Hmm, not quite ready. Boom. These things are so freaking pretty. Got this guy on the shot back. This guy is eight to six. That's a 14 incher. Awesome.
good start. Yeah. Literally, he attacked me right in between. Like? Right in between them. So, on this side. Way over here? On this side. Yep, there's two rocks okay. right in between that crag. <laughs> uh, maybe I should switch back. Okay. Let me try fishing real close, yeah. and then I'll switch back to the other rod. I can't reach that with the tie line. Uh, if you want, I'm just gonna start here for a second. I think I snagged him. It's a huge fish if I can land him. Maybe, just gotta get over my rod. Got this nice beach here. Big fish and I snagged him. So it's gonna be kind of tough to land. I, I maybe I got him in the mouth. He's trying to go into the rock. I might lose him. Got it. I'm just trying to not break him off. Because yep. he's kind of in control since I snagged him. <laughs> it's like it's wrapped around him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like wrapped all around him. I don't. Holy crap. <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> this is definitely my PB right here. Let's go! <laughs> it doesn't even fit in the net. <laughs> it was your face. <laughs> I, oh crap. Hold on, I, we get take some line out. So he took the, the red dart, definitely got him in the mouth. He just spun, so I didn't snag him. He's just wrapped up. Yes! Yes! Wow. 
wow. Good job, man. Oh my god. That's crazy right there. Thirteen incher. See you later. There's a high chance this is the final hole of the day. And I'm feeling pretty stoked about it. I got cover behind this rock here. There's a nice deep pocket on the other side. I think, I think I might be able to go home with one or two more here. Let's see what I can do. Okay, this is a nice fish. Looks like he took the pats. Maybe, yep. Took the pats. Oh, this is a beautiful fish. So 15 and a half, no 15 inch. Sweet. Thanks so much for watching. Your support from the last few videos has just blown me away. 
It's still crazy thinking about how many of you are actually watching them. It's hard to fully express my gratitude, so a simple thank you is going to have to do. I've been busy trying to wrap up some of my older client work that's been hanging around my neck, and it's nearly finished. And when it's done, my cadence for new videos is going to pick up, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. There's definitely going to be some bigger trips, and I'm going to start talking about gear and technique a little bit. All right, so I posted a video from the McLeod River, and you may be thinking to yourself, the Mac doesn't open until the third Saturday in April, and here it is, the beginning of March. Well, on March 1st, the DFG consolidated the regs across the state, so they're all consistent now. In some fisheries, they made changes based on the latest data about their health, where the old regs didn't necessarily make any biological sense anymore. Notably, the section of the McLeod between McLeod Lake and Shasta Lake is now open to catch and release all year. And uh, Hat Creek also has opened up in the wild trout section between Baum Lake and Lake Britain. So that's great news for the fish and the rivers. It means they're really healthy enough to allow winter fishing. So with that news, I made some quick plans to head up there. I invited my new friend Fabian, whom I met through a mutual fly fisherman, and we set out to start at the Audinaw campground. A few miles away, we encountered too much snow, and for my Subaru, uh, we actually got it stuck, so oops. Uh, uh, we got it unstuck and went over to Ash Campsite and basically hiked all the way over to Adina. We skipped over several miles of perfectly fishable water, so next time I'll probably just work closer to Ash Camp and spend more time fishing. The Mac is mostly pocket water and deep runs, and I'd consider it very technical, so you can spend a lot of time picking it all apart. Uh, we saw a midge and a caddis hatch, and unfortunately we only saw two fish rise all day, so I split my time about 60-40, tight lining and indicator nymphing. Um, I'm slowly getting more proficient fishing with a wool indicator, but I'm still making a ton of mistakes and tangling my rig all the time, but I'm building confidence and I'm getting more hookups. I landed 14 rainbows, including my new personal best. That 21 inch rainbow was a complete shock to me. As you saw in the video, I thought I snagged him because it was coming in backwards, but he just rolled himself up in the line. I ended up getting him on the size 14 red dart with a copper bead. All the usual nymphs work for me today. Uh, the Pat's rubber legs, Duracells, Waltz worms, Shopvacs, they all caught multiple fish. Fabian's just getting into fly fishing and he spent much of his time fishing a collapsible spinning rod. And he caught five on this small custom made jig soft plastic tube thing he made. Uh, barbless hooks of course, but later that evening he told me he was researching how, Euro, how to Euro nymph and so I've definitely planted that seed, fingers crossed. So if you have any questions about my fishing equipment or my gear, I have links to everything down in the description. And if you'd like to follow along with me in real time, look me up on Instagram. I post pictures, video clips, fun stuff to my story so you don't have to wait for me to get these videos edited and posted. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I try to post a new video every single week. And in the next one, I'm mixing things up a little bit. I tried to sum up Mount Lassen in the middle of a snowstorm, and uh, it was a pretty epic trip, and I can't wait to share it. Until next time, everybody, Godspeed.